Well, that was an episode. A lot to take in there. Probably the craziest episode of the season yet, though they've all been crazy in their own special ways. But yeah, a lot happened. I'm going to approach this video a bit differently instead of like breaking it down, picking a couple aspects to like write a script about. I'm just going to ramble about it based off the screenshots I took while watching. So yeah, this is going to be a bit different, but hopefully you guys like it. This, I think, will just be better for me to talk about it this way too. But yeah, uh, first thing we happened is that Beatrice saved Subaru from Elsa stabbing him and killing him again. And that raised a lot of questions. Like, questions I didn't even know I had, I, I have answers to, and I have even more questions. Like, Beatrice locked Subaru in her library to try and protect him. Subaru wanted to be killed. He wanted time to reset. And this is really interesting for reasons I'll get more into with the later part of the episode. Because, like, Beatrice, like, what is she doing? What is she after? What is her goal, her intentions, her reason for living? They actually got some of these signs. Like, we don't know Beatrice's motivation up until this point. She's acted in the way she did because she's Beatrice. And I didn't really question it. She seemed like a generally good person, though distant from everyone else, which is fine. But this episode brought up some very interesting questions. Why had she helped Subaru so much? Why did she save him from the curse? Give him some answers, even if she is very vague at times, and heal him on multiple occasions. But really not do anything to help the other characters. And like, Subaru even asks the question, who asked you to save me? Which is just fascinating and like she looked repulsed by that like she was repulsed at him not being grateful for her saving him i think i got those pronouns right hopefully you guys know what i mean though but yeah she basically ruined his plan to die and be reset and everything and we also see her holding the gospel which why that's the thing that he that super got from sloth why is she holding it? Why does she view it as so precious? And this ties back from the other episode, episode two, I think it was, where she revealed that it was uh, something she cared about, or at least something she knew about, and she seemed to care about Sloth. But why? And it's interesting, when Subaru starts asking questions, she even comments, that question isn't in the book either, I suppose. Which, that raises another question. Why does she always go with, I suppose? It seemed like it's just a weird vocal quirk that Beatrice had. But what if there's a deeper meaning to it? What if the reason she always says that is because she doesn't know for sure. She's just following the gospel. So that's what she reads. So I suppose this is true. Very fascinating. <laughs> Very crazy. And like Super asks, it's like, will you do anything not in the book? Or will you only do what's in the book? And she basically says, yes, I suppose. And that everything she does is in accordance with the gospel. And like that is the reason for her life. And like, why would a spirit have that as the reason for life? Like, it obviously shows that she is in some way affiliated with the witch's cult. But how? Like, is she part of it? Does she want them to win? Why would she want them to win? Is it, like, preordained because of some reason? And why is a spirit of the library in league with the witch's cult? I could almost understand maybe if she was human, but she's not. So I guess it sort of makes sense that maybe the witch's cult could be aligned with uh, different spirits. Like, spirits could be aligned with different factions. Like, Puck is very much aligned with Amelia. So does Beatrice have the same sort of alignment with members of the witch's cult? I wonder. And yeah, and she like makes a comment as if you can move my heart on your own, which yeah, I mean, like, why would a spirit kind of join Subaru's harem? I mean, Puck is just fluffy, but he's not part of Subaru's harem. And then Beatrice also makes a comment saying like everything she does is for mother. Who is that mother? The, is it the Witch of Envy? That would kind of make sense, but I feel like that's too simple for ReZero. But yes, uh, Elsa came in, killed Subaru, and then time reset, and everything was happy. Well, not really happy. And isn't it weird that I'm seeing that things are happy when the main character has just been killed? Rizira is weird. Very weird. And we're not even to the weirdest part of the episode. Well, actually, I think we might have been. Like, this whole episode is weird. But yeah, we get sort of like a quick 
run through of like the events at the house the night or after Amelia and Super come back from the trial, which is kind of clever the way they do it. Like they know the viewer doesn't care about these things, so they just like speed through it, which actually fits really well. It's kind of like how they did it in Fate Heaven's Feel at the first movie. They just like breeze through all the common route stuff that we already know about and don't need to see again. So yeah, Subaru basically does everything right there and is going to go off with Roswell. And then Otto makes a comment like how calm Subaru is being and that that's concerning. Otto is very perceptive here. Otto's also great here, but again, we'll get to that more later. <laughs> so then Garfield in t- asks Subaru to come with him to talk about their love lives or something like that. And we learned that Rizu, I think that's the girl's name. I could be wrong. I'm bad with names. I did not write this down. Maybe I should have taken some notes. But whatever. So, yeah. Subaru basically has no idea what Garfield says because Garfield is great. And we learned that Garfield and uh, Frederica are not full siblings, but in fact half siblings. And that's why Frederica could leave because she's only a quarter beast instead of a half uh, beast. And they haven't seen each other for like 10 years. So they are okay with Subaru basically going and doing what he wants until he ends up saying that he's going to go talk to Roswell, which is very interesting. Like, there are still so many pieces and factions and motivations that we don't know. But they even make the comment saying that Subaru needs to behave himself. He's going to cause trouble, apparently, by talking to Roswell. So Garfield basically captures him, knocks him out, ties him up, and yeah. And he hides them in a special part of the sanctuary, basically to keep them from causing trouble. What's interesting, though, is that they don't kill Subaru. Which, again, like, this shows the limits of his power. Yes, Return by Death, on the surface, appears to be incredibly overpowered. Subaru gets in a bad situation. He dies. He's out of the situation. Except it only works if he dies. Back in episode one, we saw that there are limits to his power, too. If his checkpoint moves forward before he can resolve everything, then, well, he's lost. And if the characters stop him from dying, then, again, his power is useless. Very interesting here. And it also shows the fear that Subaru has, that the checkpoint might move forward again if he, like, doesn't die for so long. We also don't know, like... How often does the checkpoint move? What causes it? Is there like a time where it can only be like less than five days uh, before? Which means if he doesn't die in time, then a, all the bad stuff will be permanent. Lots of questions there. That also feels like the resets are like intentionally moved. Like there is an intelligence behind how they move. You could say like if this was a video game, that's where the designers would have put it in. But this isn't a game just like it. So is that something the Witch of Envy is doing? She is watching C. Subaru has like defeated a certain villain, so then they like move the checkpoint forward. I don't know. That's an interesting question. I feel like it'll take a while to get that answer. But yes, we also learn that Garfield can smell the witch's scent on Subaru, which keeps getting stronger. So that's why he was very suspicious of Subaru, which I guess that makes sense. And he even makes a comment that Subaru's eyes look like Roswell's. So what does that mean? (laughs) Again, so many questions. I love it. But of course, Subaru is saved by none other than Otto. Who is amazing. Like, Otto is probably the character you would least expect to come to Subaru's rescue. Like, he's been kind of a minor character. Pretty weak. But he came to Subaru anyway. And... That was, like, really amazing that Otto was willing to, like, take these chances. A normal person thrown into a crazy situation. And I love it when Subaru asks Otto why he did it. And the answer is simple. It's because they're friends. And I love this. (laughs) And I also love Subaru's reaction. He thinks he mishears the word for friend as Eugene, like a person's name, when Yuji, I think it's Yuji, Yujui? Someone who knows Japanese, please uh, clarify. But it's like, these sound very similar, so that was cool. (laughs) And, yeah. I just love the dynamic between Otto and Subaru. When I did my top three zero characters list shortly before Season 2 came out, I put Otto on it just because I liked him. He wasn't that great. But, yeah, he definitely earned that spot on the list. 
And I also love how Subaru never expected that to be the reason Otto would come to save him. It like shows Subaru's mindset how he's not used to having friends, but he has one here. And I love how this is an example of power of friendship, but done in a way that makes a ton of sense. I, I enjoy the shonen anime about friendship and all that. But what I like about ReZero is it how it takes all the ideals or all the ways things should work, breaks them apart, but still has that fundamental optimism. Because yes, there's a ton of suffering in ReZero. But you know, for all the suffering, it's a very optimistic show. It's like, yes, things are terrible, but they can be better. Yes, the main character is a foolish idiot and all that, but he can learn and grow and do things the right way. And that's amazing. In Auto Saving Subaru, it's this type of storytelling I love seeing. But what happens next? Well, we ended up learning in the after credits scene that Ram was there to help them get out of here, which is great. And Ram has some amazing lines too, saying like, of course, even as an old granny, I still be cute. I mean, she's Ram. I'm sure there's fan art somewhere of old uh, granny Ram that would be cute. I kind of want to see that. Please send it to me. Uh, okay, and yeah, that is the episode. A <laughs> kind of crazy episode. But yeah, tell me what you think, or things I missed. I think I covered the main points, or laugh at me having no idea what's going on. I'm sure you all enjoy doing that, especially if you have read the web novel. Though again, please no spoilers beyond this point in the comments. I will get to that eventually. Though it might be a few seasons. So yes, thank you for watching. Please like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe if you want to see more of ReZero videos, and I will talk to you all next time.